Oh, now you've gone and done it. You've clicked on this video, and now you're about to learn a hack that's gonna allow you to jam the blues in any key, anytime, anywhere, and it only takes two notes. And when you start applying this hack I'm about to show you, you're gonna be well equipped to handle any blues situation, whether you're playing with a buddy or hitting the stage at your local blues jam. All right, so let's get into it. So what is this two note blues hack I'm talking about? Basically, this is just gonna be a two note grouping that you're gonna be able to use to play successful one, four, five blues shuffles in any key. Let me show you. Let's take, for example, the key of A. So, if we were to apply this two note blues hack, right, we would of course need to cover the A chord, right, or an A7. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking these two notes I'm talking about, which in the key of A happen to be these two right here which is the fifth fret on the D string, and then sixth fret on the G string. So these two notes, which funnily enough, are not the note A, right? Which would be this note. If we were to play it, you know, an octave up, it's actually these notes. So this is how they sound when I have an A droning over them. Pretty much completing an A7 chord, right? Or an A dominant chord. But we're really only focusing on these two notes. So check this out. Usually when you're in a band situation as a guitar player, we tend to do like, we'll play like full bar chords or something like stuff like that, you know? But really, depending on the situation you're in, like let's say if you're in a band that, you know, of course has a rhythm section, right? You got drums, bass, maybe you have keys, right? Maybe you have a harmonica player, maybe you have a horn section, you know, whoever likes to show up at the blues jams, you know, it's different every time, but Generally, as guitar players, there's a certain pocket that we need to sit in a band mix that these two notes cover perfectly. So let's say, for example, in a simple blues shuffle, let's say the bass player is holding it down with a nice, like, uh, you know, kind of swingy, like. And then meanwhile, the keyboard player is doing something like. Something like that, right? You know, just imagine like a Hammond organ playing some bluesy licks like that, right? What your job as a guitar player to be to make sure you're sitting in the right place and not stepping on anyone's toes is more or less this. That's all you would need to play to get the job done, right? And this again is, is a, a particularly important when you're talking about playing in a combo, right? With a whole band. Now this works perfectly too if you're just jamming with just one person too, you know, again, because these two notes, they cover all the ground that we need. So what are these two notes? These two notes happen to be the flat seven and the third, the major third. If we're talking about an A chord, right? You don't have to know exactly how I come to that conclusion on what those scale degrees are. Just know that the two notes we're talking about, right, for over the chord are the flat seven and the major third, right? So, we've, we've got that covered for the one chord, right? So if we were to do something like... Just playing those notes, just like that. You know, you can imagine someone would be able to, to easily solo over just that little, little groove you're doing. Now, what happens when we gotta move to the four chord, right? So if we're in the key of A, our four is gonna be D but instead of playing a full chord or a bar chord or anything like that, we're gonna use this two note hack here. Here's the best part. We're gonna take this, right? Remember fifth fret and sixth fret on the D and G strings. We're gonna take this shape here and we're just gonna flatten it. We're gonna move both notes down a single fret each. Now what happens when we get here? We're actually gonna be covering the third and the flat seven for the four chord. But the cool thing is, they're actually, the, the order is inverted. So it's third, flat seven now, and this being the root. So root, third, flat seven. Whereas over the one chord, we had root, flat seven, third. So it's still the two notes we needed, right? Flat seven, third, third, flat seven. So it's still, it's different order, but still the right notes that we need. That's the cool thing about this particular shape. All we're doing, by the way, you can use your third finger if you want to, or your second finger, it doesn't really matter with this shape. You're moving it down one fret. You're trying to go from the one to the four chord to be like this. So 
see how just with those two notes, you can almost hear the movement of the chords, right, without any kind of, you know, without me having to do anything else, right? If I were to apply, the, you know, the bass notes, it'd be like this. Right, and of course it would kind of add some more context and it'd make more sense, but we really don't even need to do that. Right, and I'm just applying a simple groove, just little, little stabs, right? Because something like that will be perfect, especially when you have like a really active moving bass line, like I demonstrated earlier, something like. Something like that, right? So something like this will be perfect under that. Right, so you get the idea. Now, we also have, we have one more chord, right? Typical three chord blues in a 12 bar, right? We got one, four, five. We did the one chord, the four chord, now we got the five chord. Now here's the best part, right? We're, we're still staying within this neighborhood, keeping this shape together. All we're having to do to hit that five chord is moving it up a fret from the one chord, right? So we have four down here, one, and then up one fret for five. All right, so the five chord in A would be E, right? So we have the root, if we're, if we're actually forming out that chord, we have the root, third, flat seven. There's our E dominant, right? Our E dominant, or E7 triad there. But if I were to remove the, the, the bass notes, right? The root notes, we just have. So it works. So if we were to use this in context, you know. You can add little embellishments here and there, you know. <laughs> right then. And right there, just by using those two notes, that flat seven and that third, right? And, and as the order uh, changes, right? When you change the chords, you're still hanging on those same exact notes. You've got yourself an entire 12 bar blues, three chords, right? One, four, and five, and you really don't need to do anything else. Now let's say you want to adapt this to a new key. Let's say you want to do, I don't know, G, right? So you'd want to start with finding the root note, right? And kind of this is kind of using the fretboard conveyor belt method, right? Starting with using the root note on the low E string. So we know G is the third fret on the low E string, right? So now that we've got, we've established that, this is going to be our neighborhood for all the, for these two note hack here. So we're going to start with our first chord. Right, so it literally sits directly below where the root note is. So that flat seven and that third are gonna be on the third fret of D and then the fourth fret of G. So that's our one chord. So if we were to go through, you know, like the chord changes. Right? And if let's say we wanted to move it to the key of, let's say C sharp, right? That would be here. The C sharp on the low E string is on the ninth fret here, right? So we know that's where the root note is. So we just drop that, that two note hack, right? Our little two note shape, which is gonna be uh, the flat seven is here on the ninth fret of the D string. 10th fret on G is gonna be the third. And then same, same deal. Literally any key you can adapt this to. If you want to do E, I recommend doing it in a higher octave, right? So you're going to be going a little bit up here on the fretboard, but finding E, right? Instead of open E, you'd find the 12th fret E, right? It's the same thing. You know? So it literally applies to any key. All you have to do is just fretboard conveyor belt it to whatever location you need to to adapt to the right key. And voila, you are now playing the blues in whatever key that you find yourself in. So there it is, your two note blues hack that's gonna allow you to jam the blues in any key, anytime, anywhere. And you're gonna start coming off like a seasoned blues pro when you jam with anybody. And speaking of jamming, I still owe you that free gift. Here it is. It's a free blues solo heat map. 
So today we went over a very powerful hack to allow you to play blues rhythm guitar at any key anywhere on the fretboard. But this is going to allow you to play some ripping red hot blues solos all over the fretboard as well. So you definitely want to complement that with what you just learned today. So be sure to click here to claim your copy or check the link in the description box. Well that about does it for this video. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastering Method and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.